I'm Eric Levitt. I'm presenting uh, results on the Barostim Neo device. It's a second generation system for electrical stimulation of the carotid baroreceptors. Uh, the system consists of uh, a pulse generator implanted in the pectoral region and a single lead that's implanted in the carotid sinus. Uh, that the lead is implanted uh, through a two to four uh, millimeter incision or centimeter incision. Uh, and uh, the electrode position is optimized by observing intraoperatively the pressure reduction that's observed by applying the stimulation. Uh, in this study, uh, we looked at 30 uh, resistant hypertensive patients, the baseline systolic blood pressure around 170 millimeters of mercury. Uh, the patients were heavily medicated, around six medications on average, uh, and uh, with uh, sort of a standard battery of medications, but also on top of that, some patholytics as well as uh, uh, aldosterone antagonists were in place in these patients. Uh, over the course of three months uh, and six months, the pressure reduction in the patients in systolic was 26 millimeters of mercury. Diastolic reduction was around 12 to 13 millimeters of mercury. Um, and medications remained constant during that time. Of the 30 patients, 20% uh, of them, six patients, had actually had a previous uh, renal denervation. It's another procedure that's used for addressing resistant hypertension. Uh, those patients had a very similar pressure drop over the same time period as the patients who did not have that history. So that addresses one question that people have had because the therapies uh, may have some mechanistic uh, uh, actions in common that uh, can they synergize or, they, or are they redundant with each other. And I think this, this uh, study shows that they really uh, are not redundant and they can be put on top of one another to improve the outcomes of patients. The safety profile of the new system is also substantially improved. Uh, this is from observations in our previ previous trial where we noticed that a lot of the patients, in, in that system we had patients who were implanted bilaterally on the carotid sinus, two leads, one on each side. We noticed that about 75% of the patients were implanted unilaterally, or were treated unilaterally with the system. Uh, so this system is unilateral, requires only one incision, and as a result, the perioperative uh, safety profile was actually just about the same as what you see with a pacemaker. So from the standpoint of the uh, improvement in blood pressure and the implications for outcomes, as well as the safety profile, we think this is an attractive option for patients with persistent hypertension. Next step, so right now this device is approved for sale in Europe for, for hypertension, and we are proceeding with that. Uh, we are also in Europe uh, doing a, a study in uh, systolic heart failure. And then in the United States, we are in discussion with the FDA for trials that will uh, get us to a path to market for the system in resistant hypertension. I think uh, the, the trial would probably start uh, in another, uh, probably, I would say probably 8 to 12 months. And uh, hopefully we'd be on the market sometime around uh, 2014, 2015.